show you how to use the principles and elements of design chart for your projects. When you do this first, it will actually help you determine the boundaries of the principles and elements that you're going to use on your work and save you a lot of time because you won't have to struggle with what you should do. This is going to be your planning document that will tell you what you should do. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, and I went ahead and did this um, part of starting the video, is wrote the format of what I'm going to be looking at. And the format in this, sen in this sense is going to be what, uh, what style am I using, okay? Um, I'm gonna use one that um, is not um, common. Uh, it's called Gothic Abstraction, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to type in Gothic Art and look at some Gothic Abstraction art and use that to determine what goes in each one of these boxes, okay? What points do they use? What lines, shapes, form, space, value, color, balance, contrast, emphasis, movement, pattern, rhythm, and unity is used in this art style so that I can complete this chart. So when I do my work, I know how to, how to apply or what elements to select and how to apply them with the principles. Okay, so first let's go to Google over here and I've already typed in Gothic art and I'm gonna click abstract so that I get Gothic abstraction. Or you can just type it in, Gothic abstraction. And it's going to give me artwork, okay? All kinds. Um, some of it's gonna be professional, some of it's gonna be amateur. Some of it's going to be photography, some of it's going to be painting, some of it's going to be uh, logos over here. Um, what else have we got? There may be some sculpture, all kinds of stuff, okay? So when I look at this, what do I see? And you, you can see some points or dots that are in the, in the artwork. In fact, this one looks quite has a lot of dots and I can see the dots in here. And if I were to describe the dots, the points that are used in Gothic abstraction, how would I describe them? Okay. So when I look at these, here's some more really big ones. You'll see that the dots are mostly ovals. So if I come in here to my chart, they're more um, oval shaped dots. They are, if I look at this work over here, let's see what lets me get a little bit closer. Okay. Oh, it's taking a while to pull it up. Must be a big file. All right, I'm just gonna go back to this. Um, and I can see that these are done very rough. They're not, they're not perfect, right? So they tend to be um, rough shaped rather than, whoops, perfectly round. see what else so there's not a lot of them there's not a lot of oh, this one's kind of interesting it's a whole painting made out of dots so they have a lot of texture, okay? So rough shape rather than putting down, round and perfectly round dots have a lot of texture. Enter. Um, and you may need to, let's see, 
Where's the home? Uh, wrap the text on this to get it to fit in your box. And that's it, right? I now know that if I am going to go in and create artwork in this style, that I'm going to use ovals, rough shape rather than perfectly round dots, and I'm going to have a lot of texture on those dots. Okay? I, it, it really narrows down what I'm doing. I don't have to guess. I don't have to try multiple things. And I won't throw something in there that doesn't belong. I'm not going to go in and put perfect circles in there. I'm not going to put perfectly round circles in my artwork. Okay? Um, line. Let's go look at the lines. Here are a lot of lines. They look like slash marks, which kind of fits Gothic, right? So for that, I'm going to put um, thick slash mark shaped. Some of these are very organic. So the, there's not a lot of ge geometric shapes in here. Everything's are, everything is very organic. So let's put that in there. Um, organic like vines growing. And anything else. Now lines also refer to leading lines. So you might want to see where where do lines go? And they're very, here's a good example. You get this, they're very up and down. They're very vertical. And even though I set it up this way, it's still not doing it. Okay. And we keep going. Um, as we've seen, the, the shapes are very, um, they're not, sometimes not is actually the better way to describe something, not geometric, but organic. Um, they look like they are live, alive. So what I got. They're very decorative. You want to be as specific as possible because if you say things like, um, well, I don't know why the I on my keyboard isn't working. There we go. Because um, if, if you say things that are too vague that can apply to anything, then it doesn't work. Um, for instance, if I had gone on here on a color and I said color, um, bright colors, that, that, that won't help me. I need to be much more specific with this. Okay. Yeah. Something's going on with the eye on my keyboard. I think I was having an E problem yesterday. Okay. Wrap text. There we go. Uh, form, space, value. So form kind of similar to shape. So you may, these may these may be the same on this and they are for the most part our, our shapes our forms um, are very organic and so I'm just gonna if my mouse will cooperate okay so they're they're similar it's just their shapes in three dimension um, space and it's also the same now don't do this unless it's true I mean it's easier to just copy and paste but if it doesn't work <clears throat> then it won't be right all right so value we have very high contrast artwork here when we look at this you got a lot of black and white which makes it very high contrast okay so my value is very high contrast which is also known as high key, by the way, if you see that term high key, it's a term from, that comes from film um, value and photography. Okay, very high contrast, high key, black and white. With minimal 
color. Okay, and then we look at colors and um, we have mostly red or dark jewel tones. Oops, and my spelling's atrocious. Got worse after spell check. It should be good. Okay, mostly dark red. Mostly saturated. See, I'm adding more adjectives, and the more specific I get, the more of a visual image I can get from this. Okay. And that's it. And right there, I now have the basics. It would help if I added more, um, but I'm limited on how much time I can put into a video. But if I spent a little bit more time looking at through more art, seeing what I see, starting to get comfortable and familiar with what Gothic abstraction is, when I go to do a Gothic abstraction work, I'm not going to go in and use pastel colors, right? So I know I'm going to use these black, black and white, mostly saturated dark red or other dark, dark jewel tones, um, emerald green, sapphire blue. That's what we see. And then we're gonna go and do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna look at how is it balanced. And I, I already know looking on the, at this from having just looked at it, um, it's, it's primarily symmetrical. It's very symmetrical, especially in the architecture. So the work is very symmetrical. Oops. Contrast, we already talked about how it's high contrast. Um, emphasis is on this one's a little more abstract what the emphasis is because it's abstraction but the emphasis on this very clearly is people and religion so I'm gonna put that in there now um, I'm about to run out of time so I'm gonna so I'm being very um, brief with my descriptions but you see the process you look at the work and you describe what you see in as much detail as you can in these boxes and doing that the more you do this the easier it gets but this is the key right here to being able to limit your palette of principles and elements on your artwork so that you stay within the style because that's a really important thing to do also this saves you a lot of time when you do this first it may take you an hour the first time you do it or even a couple of hours and that's okay you will get faster at it you will get better at it and having done this first means that when you're making decisions about your artwork you know exactly what to do and when you apply those to your final work you're going to see that your work is better because of it. Because this is how artists and designers work. And some of them may not know they work this way because they don't put it in a chart. They just really look at a lot of work and memorize it. So they have visual references for it. Like right now, if you said to me, pop art, I immediately start seeing images in my head of pop art because that is what I've done. When I was an art student 8 million years ago, we were shown a lot of images and then we were tested on knowing the style without anyone showing us how to how to do it this way by doing it this way you can now apply it to your work there is no trial and error and i wish someone had come up with this and taught me how to do this when i was a student um, but here it is here's what you have and you just want to go through and you want to fill this out and the reason you're submitting this with your work is so that you can get feedback on it and feedback always makes you stronger so you're we're going to give you feedback on how you can improve this and usually one of the main things that we'll say to students is um, you want more adjectives you want more detail okay so let us know if you have any questions and we're going to stop this here maybe